Hello, good morning Turf House friends. Um, another video update. I've finished the, um, I'd like to say turfing, but it's just bags uh, at the moment, bags full of topsoil. Um, and I'll show you around what I've done as well, putting the chimney in for the stove, or at least the way it goes through the roof, and um, explain how that works. Okay, without further ado, let's have a good look around. So, the, um, the, the nature is fabulous. The grass is growing really quickly. It's been about a week and a half since I sowed the grass seed into the bags on this side. And um, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but we've got lots of little tiny shoots. Um, because the seeds in these joins in, in, so it's just sprouting, it's going crazy at the moment. So I watered it yesterday because unusually for the, there you are, there you can see some of the flowers coming through as well. Just coming through in all the joints. And this is what's going to bind all these bags together, I hope. Um, and also in the joins originally, I, I, I just ripped up some turf. And that's what you can see on the bigger bits. So this was the first side I did about a week and a half ago. And it's really coming on strong now. Um, the front you can see is painted with um, black bitumastic, so black tar basically. And um, that as it dulls with a little bit of sun and age and weather, will look really um, authentic and, and ancient. And then you can see I've just I was just cutting the bags and then pushing in bits of turf that was ripping up. So I dug a, a bit of turf up and then in all the joins is the seeds for this meadow mix um, grass. And this is what I'm hoping is going to bind these walls together. And then the stonework at the bottom, I took moss off the walls and put that in the joints. That's really made it look much older. The ladder's there, so I can show you the chimney in a minute. Um, it's an authentic Viking ladder, obviously. Um, so there, yeah, we'll have a look inside. We've still got to, um, there yeah, I can show you the how it's looking at the moment. Obviously not tidied up yet or anything, but uh, we've done some sanding of all the rough woodwork on the walls and stuff. Still got the roof to sand. And then I'm gonna treat it, all the timber in here with decking oil to just bring out the grain a little bit. So you can see I cut um, from the ceiling, from the roof, an, an uh, oval to let the chimney through. Now this was good because it gets I get to see the quality of my fiberglass, my fiberglass skin. And I'm really, really pleased. Um, normally you don't get to, to check out and make sure your fiberglass is of sufficient quality and well soaked in resin and everything. But cutting this oval out, there's the stove. Now you're going to have to imagine <laughs> the chimney going up to the oval in the roof. Now there's a good um, gap, um, around about six inches between the chimney and the wood which is absolutely more than enough you'll find when it's it's lit and it's as hot as you want there'll only be three inches not even that two inches around there that is really warm <clears throat> you know warm where you would think it could damage timber or something and then after that there's ample space there the timber will never get any sort of um dangerous heat on it at all and just to add a little bit of extra protection i've got some intumescent i think that's the right word um varnish and i do i paint about two or three inches around that oval with fiery retardant varnish so then the chimney obviously slides through that hole down and then straight straight into the top of the stove now it's worth noting and it's obvious when you think about it but the top of the chimney has to be vertical and then the opening horizontal otherwise it doesn't draw properly 
If the chimney's at an angle and the wind's coming in the wrong direction, it will force the smoke back down the chimney and into the fire. It's obvious when you think about it, but not obvious. It mustn't be that obvious because I've made that mistake once. <laughs> um, right, I'll just, we'll go up the ladder. That's what I've left it here for. And I just want to show everybody. Right, there's the, the chimney coming through the roof. Right, so there's a four millimetre steel plate that's screwed and mastic to the fiberglass with stainless steel screws. And then I've put just rocks, just random rocks around that to keep the grass away from the chimney as it grows. And that's the only bit that I will tend on this roof and just cut it back to make sure any dry grass isn't going to be near the chimney and could catch fire. Um, and then, so the, the chimney tube comes through the roof and then that is a, a nut and bolt welded on and that will tighten onto the chimney and hold it in place. So the reason that it's a four millimeter piece of sheet steel with that welded into it is because it will get high winds here coming off the mountains and, um, and it'll catch the chimney and so it needs something really substantial to hold it completely steady and in place. So this is the roof then that I finished yesterday and you can see the bags and the layout and the bits of grass that I've stuck in already and so this was only seeded up yesterday I think you can see the the grass seeds now they even seem to work if you just lay them on top of the um, the hessian they, they seem to just like have their own little way of burrowing through it and growing it's awesome okay it's probably enough of my ramblings and thank you very much for your interest Thank you very much for following all the lovely people that are following this build. It means a lot. I do enjoy it. I do love sharing these things. Um, I'll just we'll step back and take a little final look. And hopefully you can use your imagination to see how it will be when all that grass is um, on either side. I think, I hope... Do you agree with me and it's going to look absolutely superb. Thank you very much for your interest. Take care. Bye now.